Today I'm participating in the Quick Change Collab hosted by Teresa B. DIY. The playlist will be in the description. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. Welcome. I have two projects and so we're going to start with project number one. I have some of these little slate boards that I thrifted. Paint sticks. There's a piece of fabric that has Velcro on it. It's all mangled and terrible looking and that came from the thrift store as well but I knew I could use that little section for something. And then this little board that I also got from the thrift store. I don't know who that is. So there we go. It's got a nice little hanger on the top. I'm going to use my glue gun and some glue sticks, scissors, you know the routine. I'm going to start by trimming this up and taking off the parts that I am not going to need for this project. So what we mean by changeable projects is that it can be used from season to season or from month to month. It can just be used all year long in your decor and you can get a seasonal look just by changing a few things around. So that's what I've done with this first project. I'm going to make a pocket with this burlap around this sign so that I can do floral arrangements in here. Just going to use the glue gun, kind of tuck it around the back, glue it down, and then gluing it on the sides. Be sure to protect your fingers because burlap is an open weave and you will definitely burn yourself, so just be super careful. So I'm just pressing that down, trying to make sure that I got somewhat of an even line, pulling it across the other side. I cut it a little short, but that's not a problem. Just going to glue it on the side instead of the back. Just like that. Fold it over, press it down, of course with protected fingers. Show me little strings come away, just pull those off, not a problem. So this is the pocket so far. So you can just pull those off and throw them away. Okay, I'm just taking my rotary cutter and trimming off a little bit of excess that I had back there. Alright, so I'm going to make a new backing for this top compartment and I'm going to use painter sticks to do that. These are just 12 inch painter sticks that I have. I'm going to measure enough space so that it overlaps on each side so that it can be glued. I see that I am out of camera angle up there, but you get the picture. Just going to take my little knife that I got from Dollar Tree, and I did get these paint sticks from Amazon. So just trimmed it, get to trimmed a little bit on each side and just kind of snap it and it'll come right off. I'm going to do the same thing all the way down here and then start putting on the glue to glue it down. I usually use Gorilla Glue sticks, but I ran out, so I'm just using the plain craft store sticks, but this will be indoors, so you won't need that extra hold. Now I'm going to take, these are little wooden stir sticks, I've just trimmed them down and I'm going to use them to give a little support to the back, because I will be pushing down on these and I don't want to break anything. I had a little piece that needed to be trimmed off. I didn't want to cut my fingers and I'm just using a metal ruler rather than wood so that it won't you know you won't cut into it and then just kind of wiggle it back and forth and that should snap right off I have some pliers that I use there some people call them nail pullers but they're like a it's a type of a plier that's flat on the end and they're very strong and they cut through things really easy and these thin sticks, they, it just cuts right through them like butter. Okay, so now I have some antiquing wax and I have a baby wipe. I'm gonna put a little bit of the antiquing wax onto the baby wipe, rub it around a little bit, and then I'm gonna stain those paint sticks. I could have done this before. But I wasn't really sure what direction I was going in as far as color and finish until I got to this point. Some of the sticks are darker than others, 
um, but you know, you just want to apply your paint just a little bit thicker on the areas that need it. So these pale, paler sticks on the end, they're going to get a little bit extra attention. It's really easy to do. If you put a wax on with a paintbrush, it's going to be very thick. It's going to be a very heavy coverage, which if that's what you're looking for, then by all means, do it that way. But I wanted this to be more of a washed, lighter color. I didn't do any painting or distressing on this little frame stand, uh, whatever you call this thing, organizer. I didn't do anything on it. It's exactly how I got it from the thrift store, except that I cleaned it up. Now, these are white, a bright white color, so I'm just putting a little bit of that on there, on the edges of these little chalkboard frames, so that I can put those over there in the, um, the in the frame and that they will match. Just taking the hangers off because I'm not going to need them. And then this is where we are going to show our different seasons. This is how we're going to show it. I'm just writing it on with a pencil first so that I can erase it and fix it if it's not where I want it to be. I didn't center mine. You can certainly center yours and measure it and or you could use stickers to do this, whatever you want to do. But for me, this was the way to go. This is kind of a lengthy process, just getting the first part of this project done, but after it's done, then the rest of it goes fairly quickly. So I'm gonna do winter, spring, summer, and fall the same way for each one of these little plaques. And the plaques I got from Dirt Cheap, but they originally came from the Target dollar spot, I do believe. Now I have some Dollar Tree little Velcro stickers. I'm gonna use the soft sides on the signs on these little labels, if you will. One on each side. And then the stiff side that's got the, you know, the side that's got the little prickly sides, they're gonna go on the board. So I'm gonna do that for each one of these signs because this is how we're going to attach them to our board so that they can be changed out. You could do magnets or something like that if you want to. Okay. So I just measured and now I'm using this little piece of paper as my guide to where I wanna stick these. I measured 40 times probably to make sure that this was right. So you could use a strip instead of the dots if you want to and then it won't matter if you don't get it exactly straight. It'll make it a lot easier. All right, so now we're moving down while that glue is drying, and I'm just taking some paper shreds. This actually came out of a box of something that I bought. Had a bunch of shreds in it, so I'm just using that to stuff down in here. I want it to be brown because you can see a little bit through burlap, so I didn't want to put some crazy color in there that you'll be able to see through and make it real obvious. I want it to look like this could be potting soil or something inside of here. So I'm just gonna stuff it around kind of easily, kind of evenly, evenly. I'll get the word in a minute. Okay, and now to start with each season. So we're gonna start with our winter look. I've got some greenery that would be found in the winter time, some white branches and a little bit of this, some type of a evergreen tree. I'm just gonna stick that pick in there found another little pick that had some berries. I stuck that in there, right in the front. And then just play around and put these where you want. Keeping in mind that over to the right side is where I'm going to put a little bit of extra embellishment. So I wanted to leave that kind of open on that side. Please excuse me if I stumble over my words a little bit. I did not sleep well last night and I have a bit of an antihistamine hangover. So yeah. Okay, so now I've got some pretty gold ribbon for the Christmas and winter season. It is wired. I got it from the thrift store. I know that I'm out of view here again, but this is very simple. You can see what I've done now. I've just made a loop. This is about a nine inch piece of ribbon and I've overlapped it about an inch and a half and made one about a half an inch smaller. Just folded them over. I haven't even glued them 
pinched them together and now I'm going to take another little piece of scrap that I had of that same ribbon and just wrap it around the middle. Then you're going to make a tail for it just by bending it in half just like this. Putting a little hot glue on it and then gluing that down. So now I'm just going to hold it with my clamp so that I don't pull anything loose while I do the dovetails. I want to give this a little bit of a finished look. So I was kind of going for a woodland or rustic look for this first look on this first project. So in the corner, I'm going to use some Velcro. And then I'm going to use some Velcro on the back of my bow. Be sure that you're peeling off the right ones so that they stick together. I'm doing it here, I'm gluing my finger down. That's why we should protect our fingers. Fluffing that bow a little bit. I don't know what fabric this is on this bow, but I love it. It stays where you put it. So there we go. Simple, simple. You can always move things around like you see me doing here. I'm going to tuck some on this side. I don't like how it was just way too much on one side. I'm just moving it around. Nothing is glued down as far as florals. Do not glue them down. You're going to keep them together when you're done with this look. You will take them out and put them in a gallon size Ziploc bag. You can label them for winter and keep them for next year. How's that? Okay, so winter is over and we're moving on to spring. I'm going to put my spring label on, take that bow off, and take out that greenery. Okay, if your shreds come out, just tuck them back in, no problem. And I have chosen some spring flowers. These are all thrifted pieces that I'll be using for this look. And the spring colors, you know, things like pink and cream and white. Um, you know, a brighter green, the foliage needs to be, you know, a lighter color, I think is an appropriate look for spring, for me anyway. I do like how this looks kind of wild. If you've watched my videos before, you know, I kind of like that rustic woodland cottage style. So this looks good for me. My kids are home and rolling around upstairs if you hear anything, I'm sorry about that. But we're working at home moms, aren't we? Most of us. So you get it. Okay, these look like baby hydrangeas. They're so cute, these little bushels. All right, and then I'm just gonna poke the little eucalyptus around here and there, just for a little variety. I think going for maybe three different types of picks is a good, easy look to keep up with. And you can use scraps. That's what I've pretty much used. There's an exception of a couple of picks, yeah. But there's a lot of scraps in here too. All right, now we have to make a bow. So I'm going to use a piece of this wired burlap that came from Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to use a piece of this vintage ribbon that I have. Since the ribbon won't stand up on its own, we're gonna use it glued down to this other ribbon. That's all you gotta do. Just run a little glue down there, use a little zigzag pattern, and you will have a custom ribbon. So I'll try to show you a couple of different types of bows also in this video. All right, so here we go. Right in the center, pretty much by eyeballing it. I'm gonna add some glue, protect your fingers. Again, it's gonna go through this lace very easily, so just be careful. And then you wanna do that all the way around and I just took my ends and tucked them under. Not necessary, you can trim them off if you want. I just tucked them under. But this is how it's going to look. And you're going to use that same technique on both pieces. So now I'm going to dovetail one of these pieces. You need to be kind of light handed with the glue because it makes it really thick and it's, you don't want it to be too hard to cut through. Okay, so I've made one loop, squeezed it together. And 
then I'm going to take lace and tie it around the middle. So this bow is only going to have one loop on each side. And I've just tied it in the center with the decorative ribbon so that it has a pretty center. Then you're just going to pull these apart. Not a lot of fluffing with this because it's just a very simple bow. And then you can trim the back off if you want. You can scoot that ribbon around since it's not glued. That way you get it right in the center where you want to have it. This ribbon is a little more wily, so I'm going to take a piece of burlap, go about an inch down after I have made it into a V, and I'm just tying a double knot with a little bit of jute cord. Now it will stay in position. Okay, see those have a little more body. They're a little bit stiffer. Makes the bow a little wider on the bottom. I've just cut those um, the little pieces of ribbon that are left on there. I just cut them in a slant. I decided to leave those on there. I like the look of that. And you can see I'm using some recycled pieces of ribbon. And we're going to put our piece of Velcro on the back and let it dry. Now because we already have a dot up there that stays up there on that frame, all we have to do is fluff our bow and then add this to the corner. And this is our second look for project one. This is our spring look. So spring is over. Now we're going into summer. We're going to pull out all these pieces. You know how to do this by now. You're going to pull them out. You're going to put them in a zipper bag with a label, including that bow, so that you can use them the next time spring rolls around. All right, now it's summer, so we're going to put our summer label on there. And I've chosen some of these pretty white or cream colored flowers, some little pieces of picks that I have left, and a fern. I believe it's a fern. I got this at the thrift store, and it is brand new. I got three of these picks. It's very wild and crazy looking. Kind of reminds me of how my grass grows in my yard after it's rained a lot down here in the south. It just gets crazy. I've decided to add a piece of fern in the back there, and then I'm just going to start adding in these beautiful flowers. I'm not sure where they came from, and they were not on a pick when I got them from the thrift store, so I don't know what the name of these are. It looks sort of like a rose. What do you think? Do you know what these are? Okay. You know how it is with arrangements. You want to space them out. You want to give them some room. That's how I was doing it here. I wanted to look a little bit wild. Speaking of wild, we're going on to our next bow. I'm going to take several different pieces of what looks to me like rustic or farmhouse ribbon. This one has wire, but the other ones do not. And I'm just going to cut them into pieces. So I'm going to do three of each piece. And then I've decided to use some of this clearance ribbon that I got from Walmart in the springtime. Looks like fall ribbon, but I think it'll be fine. And I'm just going to just for giggles, add in a little bit of jute in there too. You'll recognize some of these ribbons. They came from Dollar Tree and then the other ones came from the thrift store and then Walmart. So that's what we got. This is a little messy bow. Gonna take some burlap, put it around the middle. Gonna tie it in a few knots really, really tight. And then you don't have to trim that off if you don't want to, you can leave it in there. Kind of just pull those a little bit, get them out where they're kind of even on the sides. Fluff, fluff, fluff. And then trim off on the end so that they're even on both sides. The shorter you make these ribbons, the bushier these will be. You know the routine by now. We're gonna add some hot glue and the glue dot. Now these are adhesive glue dots, but I want them to be something that's gonna survive being tugged on since we're gonna be putting them on and removing them frequently. So there you go. This is our summer look. Now 
now for my favorite season for fall and it happens to be my favorite of all these looks as well these are all from the thrift store got some type of little pomegranates I think a rose hips some type of a wild looking grass with some I don't know what that is on the top some type of foliage or berry on the top and then I've got some of this grass it's just a grass pick and it's kind of papery it feels kind of papery I'm just gonna place that down in that pocket start spreading that out where it looks good with the weight being mostly on the other side we don't want it to obscure our bow and then you just start placing these down now when I do my arrangements I might also add that I cut things in different heights and I layer them I don't put all the flowers in the back or all the grass in the back and I move the grass around and poke the greenery around your florals or whatever you have there and it works perfectly it always gives me the look that I like that's pleasing to me but do whatever makes you happy you know whatever you like but they're on wire so they're really easy to manipulate I love these they grow in the water but I'm not sure what they're called and now we're gonna do the bow for this I'm gonna use that same ribbon that I got from Walmart and you can see that I'm just doubling, doubling, doubling over loop after loop after loop so that I have three loops on each side and my bow is going to be about seven inches wide all together. So you'll see it now. And then I've got a piece of jute and I'm just taking that jute and tying that around the middle. Y'all, there are so many bow tutorials out there that you can watch that will show you a variety of ways to make bows on bow makers and by hand and such. So if you don't get what you need from my video, just look it up. You can find a video to show you how to make all kinds of bows. But there we have it. I'm gonna take that last, that little piece that I had, that I began with and I'm gonna wrap it around. That's gonna be the center. Careful not to burn yourself. I just hot glued it down. And then we have two tails now. I glued a long one on and I already have one. So that's what our bow looks like. We're putting our Velcro dot on there. Waiting till it is cool so that it won't come off. And then I'm gonna place it right there. Fluff the bow and then move around my greenery and the tails to get them in the desired position. And just you know don't be afraid to move this stuff around and this is our fall look what do you think which one is your favorite of all those there you go all right be sure to follow me on social media I'm on Pinterest and on Instagram project number two we're going to use glue sticks we're going to use the backing of some calendars that came out last year from Dollar Tree. You can just cut the back off and cut them into little squares. I've got some little cardboard to use as reinforcement that I've already cut. You're going to use magnets. Mine are adhesive backed. I'm going to use this little crafter square metal truck from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use some scraps of foam board just to show you and then I'm going to use this that came from Target originally but I got it from Goodwill I'm going to remove the hanger off the back because I don't need those and I'm going to use these little pieces to give my truck some space it's going to be not flat in the frame but it's going to be standing up on the frame that's how I want it because I want some space behind the truck. We want to actually have a piece of a truck bed. So in order to do that, you're gonna use some Gorilla Glue sticks to stick to the metal. Work quickly and carefully. That metal gets hot and the glue will dry fast and then you won't have a good, a good bond. So there I am just deciding where it needs to be. 
and I decided that I wanted to roughen up this just a bit make it look a little more farmhouse or rustic so I'm taking my foam block here my sanding block and I'm just going around and I believe this was chalk paint because it is coming off on the black board there but that's fine I just rubbed it with a dry cloth and it seasoned up quite nicely okay so now we're gonna add a little glue and I'm going to put my truck down on the frame it is actually glued to the blackboard in the back and not to the frame I'm gonna put some clamps on there to hold that in place until it dries and then once that happens you can see there's a little space when I moved it over and it is secured on there nicely we're gonna make a, some bars for the back of the truck or rails and I'm going to use some of these wooden stir sticks to do this You can trim down some popsicle sticks if that's what you have, you know, whatever you have. And I'm going to start off by just snapping a piece off with those pliers I told you about, those cutters. And I'm going to place it under there. I put my finger on top so I could feel where the heat was to know that the glue was there. And I'm just propping it up with another piece of wood to keep it secure until the glue is dried. I'm going to put the second support reel in right underneath where the dot is. Once those are dry, we're going to get the rail for the bottom. I'm just making a mark where I can cut. Those are those little bull nose pliers I was talking about. I'm going to cut those down. You can sand it if it bothers you, but I don't mind the rough look. Then I'm going to go above it for the next rail and cut it off. You can use any frame you want to for this, by the way. It doesn't even have to be a blackboard frame. It could be anything you find. It's about an 8 by 10 maybe. Maybe smaller. Okay, so now we have our little rails on the back of the truck. Isn't that nice? And you can see in the front where the hanger was that there's still that hole there and it bothers me. So I'm going to stack up two pieces of the foam board because that is the thickness of my frame. And I'm going to color it with my metallic silver marker. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back and slide that in there. Now it's not as noticeable. Okay, so that's the base for our project. And now we're going to move on to what's going to make it seasonal. Go ahead and choose any seasonal pictures that you have from the backs of your calendars. Trim them up. Place them down on a little bit of cardboard. You can leave an edge to give it a little bit of dimension or you can just cut it off flush. I wanted to have a little dimension like a frame around mine so you can see the space, just a very small space. You can use a cutter for this, you can use scissors, whatever you feel comfortable with. All right, and I love my glue sticks for these types of things. Then I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue and secure my magnet. It is adhesive, but I want to go ahead and be absolutely sure that it doesn't come off. So I've just glued it down and you know it's going to stick to the metal. So here we go. We're just going to put it on the door. What do you think? Nice. So these are going to work nicely for this little truck. I did go ahead at the end. You didn't see this part. And I used some acetone nail polish remover and then took that entire door, the black trim around the door off because I didn't like how it didn't sit flush in there. Gonna go on and do the rest of them with whichever ones you like. So I got an Easter one, a Valentine's, and I'm gonna do a Christmas. These are just examples for you, what you can use, but you can certainly use any ones that you like. There's room in the back of the truck now to put some de decorations and embellishment. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add some little pieces of Christmas time greenery in the back. As an example. And then if you wanna do Easter, you can pick some more Eastery looking things. Do you like this idea and have you found the metal trucks? Because you could certainly do this yourself. Very easy. And then you have a piece of decor that you love that you could look at all year long and look forward to decorating it for each season or each holiday. If you enjoyed this video, 
please be sure to subscribe. I'd love a thumbs up if you did like anything or learn anything in this video. Here are all of our finished looks. Be sure that you look in the description box and in the comment section so that you can watch the rest of the ladies who are in the playlist. Bye!